Hello everyone, my name is Agustin Caroso and welcome to Station. So in this episode, I'm going to teach you how you can optimize your Webflow website to load faster so you can give your visitors a better experience. So let's get started. Alright, so in order for us to improve the speed of our website, we need to do several small steps that would end up making a difference at the end. So I'm gonna, let's pretend that I just opened this project and it's a little bit slower than I would like. So let's start by doing these steps and the number one would be removing CSS classes that are not being used. And the way we can check that is after you're done with this page or your project, you can come here into Style Manager and you're going to be able to see all of the styles and classes that are being used. But here, this button, uh, it, it's, it's telling us that right now, in my case, I have two classes that are not being used at all. So they're just occupying space and not being used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, clean up, and I'm going to be able to remove them. All right. So that would be num uh, step number one. Step number two would be simplifying interactions and they would happen almost in the same way. When I come here into interactions, which means obviously animations and things that move, uh, I'm going to be able to here clean up the you use interactions. And in my case, I have one animation that I actually created, but I didn't use. So whenever my uh, visitors are opening their website, this animation is loading, but it's not being used. And I also what I mean when I'm uh, by simplifying interaction is not only cleaning the ones that you're not using, but also making sure that you're using clean and fast interactions first that do not interrupt your visitors and also do not overuse them. Right. We all of us have that friend, that web designer friends, even it was me in the beginning to talk, to, 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 to be honest with you. I'm going to show it to you right now what happens when you overdo animations and interactions. All right. So pay attention here. Wow, what just happened there? Exactly. I used a lot ton of animations in the, and interactions at the same time. And not only it's bad for our website, but it's also bad for our visitors. So that's what I mean by number two, simplifying interactions. Make sure that you clean the ones you're not using and also make sure you're using as, uh, the minimal amount possible. Number three would be to lazy load videos and images. For images, thankfully, uh, Webflow just updated their platform where we are able to lazy load our images inside the platform right here. I'm going to be able to click here. Let's go into the settings and in here, image settings, I'm going to be able to uh, load here. I'm going to be able to choose either to lazy load it or to eager load it. And what those does mean? Lazy loading means that as soon as our website starts loading, uh, they, uh, this image in particular is only going to start loading when the user ha has that image in view. So imagine that we have a very, 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 very long uh, website. As an example, this image right now, I don't need it to load in the first one second the, the website is loading because it's first of all, it's going to uh, take more time. And, and second, my, my visitor is not even going to be able to see this image. So lazy loading means that it's going to load these e e two images as eager, right? So as, as soon as the website loads, it's going to load them normally. But this one that I, that I set up here as lazy, it's only going to load in the moment that my computer uh, indicates that I'm going to start scrolling through it. So probably through here, it's going to be able to start loading it. And it's very good for websites that use a lot of images, so you don't have to load them all at the same time. And thank God Webflow uh, updated their software, so we are able to use it right here. So it looks like uh, at default, they're going to be, uh, they're going to have it as lazy loading, which is great for us. Now, when it comes to videos, lazy loading videos is a little bit more complicated because we're going to need to be using some kind of plugin or some uh, custom code. So if you guys would like to, I can create a, a separate tutorial for that because it's a little bit more complex. All right. So let's go to number four. And since we're talking about images, let's keep talking about them. And number four is serve optimized images. 
and that encompasses a lot of things. First of all, to know the difference between when how, when to use a JP, JPG file and a PNG file, right? So most of the time, I would recommend they use a JPG file because they're smaller file sizes, they, they load fast, but of course, they're not gonna be as crispy and as clear as a PNG file. So PNG files, I will end up using them because they have transparency. So that's very important for elements that we do not need that background and we want them to be transparent, but at the same time, they're gonna be heavier and it's gonna be slower to load. So you, you're gonna need to know exactly when to use each, uh, each file, right? Then uh, another thing that's important, it's knowing when to use um, resized images, right? So let's pretend here that I this is my desktop breakpoint, right? And I have this image in this uh, resolution, which is 1920 and, and 1080. But in here, even though it's going to be for cell phones and for um, for landscape and mobile, I'm still using the same resolution, even though my cell phone's not going to be using that size. So it is recommended that you actually create a new image which, with a smaller resolution and upload it here for this specific break, break point, right? So remember that, first things first, learning to uh, when to use J, JPG and PNG. Second, apply it to specific breakpoints and dynamic resolution. And third, whenever you're using uh, photographies and, and images, make sure to actually minify them or uh, with these two software. The first one is gonna be called Tiny PNG, and the second one is gonna be called Compressed JP JPG. Both of them serve the, uh, almost the same purpose, which is gonna be uh, just to reduce the size of files. So I have a, a personal rule, which is I, I, I always try to make my image files to be less or around 300 k, k kilobytes, right? No more than that. I mean, obviously, in some cases, you're gonna have them, but uh, make sure they're they're less than one meg, mega for sure. All right. Now, before going to the last step, remember to like this video and subscribe if this video helped you somehow. And all right, for step number five, we're gonna be minifying the CSS and JavaScript. And the way we do that is we go here into project settings for a Webflow project. All right, and once here, we go to the hosting tab. Then we go below to here, advanced publishing options. And you're gonna have a CSS checked off and sometimes JavaScript and HTML. And what this means is that's gonna help your website load faster by minifying it, but it makes your code a little harder to read. And I'm gonna, but in our case, that's not gonna be a problem. I'm also gonna check minified CSS. So all of those five steps are gonna help us to have a website, uh, a Webflow website that's gonna be a little bit faster. So if you enjoyed this video and if it helped you somehow, please leave a like down below and subscribe to have more tutorials in your inbox. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.